Well, let's go ahead and, and get into our Bible study tonight. We're going to pick up where we left off last week in talking about uh, the, the warfare in witnessing. And, uh, and last week we focused on the battle in unbelievers and what is going on there and how to pray. Yeah, we need to pass the plate uh, for our Ambassador Fund offering. Thank you. Uh, and so if you got a dollar, you can put it in there. But, uh, but tonight we're going to be talking about the, the battle that goes on within us. Because Satan wants to keep lost people lost. But also he wants to keep saved people from sharing the gospel. Because you cannot be saved apart from the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. You can't be saved without responding, hearing the gospel and responding to it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so somebody's got to share the gospel for a lost person to be saved. So if, so if he can, one of his most effective ways of keeping lost people lost is to keep saved people from sharing and to keep the church from sharing. And so that's where I want us to talk tonight is about this battle in believers. Satan does everything he can to harass us and to hinder us from sharing the gospel. He does that in individuals. He does that in churches. And he's pretty effective at it. Matter of fact, he's real effective at it. Our baptisms and in, in, uh, in our Southern Baptist Convention uh, as a whole have been declining for years. Why is that? Because we're not witnessing like we used to. We're not reaching out to people like we used to. We... We have all of these excuses, you know, it's COVID, we can't go knock on doors, or it's, uh, you know, it's this, people don't like to talk to you anymore, and people don't want to hear, well, have you tried talking to them? Well, no, I just know that people don't like talking, <laughs> you know, uh, that and stuff. And so the enemy tries to do all he can. And so let's look at some of the attacks of the enemy. And I say some of them because there's, a, there's plenty more as well, but I think these are some of the main attacks that I see uh, going on uh, in the church. First of all, uh, he wants us to mess up. Uh, he wants the people of God to mess up. He wants believers to mess up. First John chapter 2, verse 4 says, He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The truth of the gospel is not in him. Uh, and, and so... Uh, and, and we can debate about, well, is he saved or is he not? Well, if we can go through all of that. But basically what he's saying is that if you're not obeying God, then there is a problem there. And oftentimes what it is, whenever we sin, the devil uses our sins against us. And he uses that in the area of witnessing. He'll use that uh, to make us be a poor witness. And that's, that's some of what we've been talking about uh, with our convention, we uh, we say one thing. If you say one thing and your life is different than that, that's a problem. That's an ineffective witness, and that will turn a lost person off uh, if they see that in your life. And that's that's the uh, let's just call it what it is and stuff. And we talked some about this Sunday about the the reality of this is that the problem in the church today is we're filled with fakers. We've got people, I'm not saying that everybody in the church is lost, but I'm saying that even those that, that are truly saved, we pretend to be the spiritual people that are really in love with God and we sing the songs and we say the right thing and we teach the lessons and we even preach the sermons and stuff like that. And yet our minds and our hearts are far from God, what people don't see. And that, that's messing up. And that will never lead to effective, supernatural, spiritual witness that can change a person's life. Uh, never will. And then when we do sin, you know, when we, we have some type of sin, then we, we mess up and the guilt from that keeps us from witnessing. Satan, Satan's that way. He'll tempt you to sin. And then when you do sin, then he'll hit guilt upon you and say, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> you know, he tries to get us to do it. And then once we do it, he tries to come against us and say, you, you know, how could you do that? You know, God can never use you. And we're defeated and we're discouraged. And defeated, discouraged people just don't witness. We don't witness. 
And then we try to, we know we're supposed to, and we try to do it, but yet we're living a life that where we grieve and we quench the Holy Spirit. And so we may pray and we may say prayers in our Sunday school class and whenever we're called on to pray, we may pray that lost people be saved because we know we're supposed to pray that, but we're not walking in the Spirit. We're not led by the Spirit, and that's just saying words. It's not effective praying uh, when you're not led by the Spirit, when you're not praying in the Spirit. Uh, and, uh, and so, and it also leads to ineffective witness. We may go ahead and witness because we know we're supposed to witness and we're put on the spot and we're supposed to do it. But if you're grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit in your life, that's going to grieve and quench the Holy Spirit in your witnessing as well. And so, uh, that we mess up and that's what Satan tries to get us to do is to mess up so that we'll shut up <laughs> is what he wants us to do. And then there's also number two, we puff up. And by puff up, I'm talking about pride. I'm talking about being filled with, with arrogance and pride. And if you really want to turn somebody off that doesn't know Jesus, then you come across as someone who's prideful and arrogant to them. And it, it will turn them off. And so the devil knows that. And so what does he try to do? He tries just to get prideful and arrogant about what we do. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 8. In verse 1 there, he says, Now concerning things offered to idols, and what he's talking about there, you know, with the idols is that, you know, don't eat meat that's offered to idols if it's going to offend your brother. And then there's those folks that are saying, I can eat meat. There's nothing wrong with that meat. The idol doesn't even exist. The idol's just a piece of wood. I can go ahead and see what you're doing. You're getting puffed up. You're getting fully, you're being arrogant and, and saying that you've got this knowledge and that you're better just because you're better. You can do what you want to and you're not concerned about your brother. And what does he say here? He says, we know that we all have knowledge, but knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. So, Nothing wrong with studying the Word of God and knowing the Word of God, but we do not want to be filled with knowledge and pride. See, we get to, we you've been hey you've been through a study you've been through a study on witnessing and now you've been through a study on warfare. I mean, we know it all, don't we? <laughs> we got this thing licked, don't we? It's no problem at all. Satan just bring it on. No, 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 no. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. That's God. That's, that's the Holy Spirit within you. But you're not greater than he that's in the world. And if you try to take him on in knowledge, in your knowledge and in your own wisdom, he's going to whoop you bad. He's going to eat you up and spit you out. Puffed up. Sometimes we get to the point, you know, that we think, well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I don't even have to listen to this sermon. I got, I got everything together. No, 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 no. Oftentimes it's played out like this. When we share with someone, we're trying to impress them with our knowledge rather than win them to Jesus. We want, we want to win them to Jesus so that we can go tell others that we've won somebody to Jesus. Or we're just trying to to let them know how much we know uh, when they just want they just want to, God to deal with their sin and they just want to find forgiveness and freedom and yet we're trying to impress them with all our Bible knowledge or we try to win an argument. We try to correct all their theology and they're not even saved. And we may win the argument but we may lose the soul. We may try to impress others, but oftentimes when you try to impress others, or maybe every time when you try to impress others, you don't impress others. So puff up. That's what <coughs> Satan tries to do. He wants us to puff up so that if we don't shut up, it's not effective. It's not effective. And then number three, it's kind of like shut up. Uh, it's clam up. That's a little nicer way to put it, isn't it? Uh, clam up. We, that's what Satan wants us to do, whether it's through sin or through pride or whatever it might be, just as long as we keep our mouth shut and don't share. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 15, we've mentioned this before in our witnessing. He says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. 
with meekness. There's that word meekness. We heard somebody preach a sermon on that. Uh, with meekness and fear. And so what does he say? He says, always be ready to give a defense. Always. Always. How long? Always. Every, be ready to give a defense. That idea of being ready is the idea of always being prepared. Always being prayed up. Always being led by the Spirit and filled with the Spirit. Always showing love. That's what it means to be ready, to be prepared. And then the idea of ready is also the idea of being eager, where not only you're prepared, but you're seeking out opportunities. You're not just waiting on opportunities to come to you. You're asking people if they know the Lord. You're asking people about their relationship with God. You're asking people to share their story with you and, 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 and see if there might be an opportunity to, to share Jesus with them. And so uh, that's what he said, always be ready. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say always win people to Jesus because we can't win anybody to Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But we can always be ready to share. We can always be ready to, to give a testimony. We can always be ready to point someone to Christ. Oftentimes we don't because of fear. Either we're afraid we're going to mess up or afraid we're going to be rejected. Fear's not from God. God is not the author of fear. If it's not from God, where does fear come from? It comes from the enemy. When we're talking about the fear of, of sharing the faith, uh, he, the, the, our flesh is fearful and the devil uses that. And he uh, entices us to, tells us that we ought to be afraid and, and just to clam up, uh, clam up. And so um, that is something that he tries as well. And then the fourth thing that he tries uh, within individuals uh, as far as our relationship with others and then also within the church as a whole is split up. Uh, he wants to divide us. He wants us to get into arguments and fights. He wants us fussing and fighting with one another. Uh, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, he says, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. And what he's talking about here is, is, yes, in our witnessing, but in our church as well. Everything we do ought to reflect the gospel. What does that mean? Gospel is forgiveness, the grace of forgiveness. We don't deserve the forgiveness of God. So we shouldn't have make people earn our forgiveness. We should treat one another as fellow recipients of the grace of God, the gospel, the good news that God has forgiven us and understand that we're all sinners. We're all messed up. We're all broken. The only thing good within us is Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. And so let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. And he says, so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. In one spirit and one mind. First Corinthians is the whole letter. The overall theme of the letter is division and trying to correct those divisions that are in there. Whenever we're fussing and fighting, whenever the church is filled with gossip and slander, those are huge turnoffs to lost people. And Satan loves it when we do that. Matter of fact, he doesn't have to do a whole lot of work convincing lost people that they don't need Jesus when they see that going on in the church. And you know what I, I found out as well? Is that when God is moving and we're loving one another and caring for one another, we invite a lot of people to come get involved in that. When there's fussing and fighting and division in the church, there's not a whole lot of invitations being sent. Satan knows that. So how does he get us to shut up? He gets us to mess up, puff up, clam up split up. Whatever he can do, he will do that. So let's talk about overcoming the enemy. If that's what Satan's trying to do, how do, how do we overcome him? And just three basic truths. We've been talking about this in our warfare, but just to kind of remind you uh, of, of, of what it is. First of all, walk in prayer. We've got to be a people of prayer, real praying, not just saying prayers, but actual prayer, where it's a part of our life. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 
uh, 5 and, and, and verse 17. Well, he just says pray without ceasing. I don't even have to look that up. And that's what he means is that, that we ought to be in this attitude of, of prayer. We ought to be continually throughout the day praying for ourselves, making sure our heart is right, making sure that we're prepared uh, to, to, to give an account, to give a testimony. We're prepared to share, praying for ourselves, praying for our church, praying for lost people that we know, lost people that we don't know, praying for new believers that they'll be discipled and that they'll grow and that they'll fall in love with Jesus and, and continue to, to love him and serve him. Never stop praying. Never let that fellowship with God be broken. Never close your ears to what the Holy Spirit might be saying. Even though you don't have an open Bible, reading the Bible right there, always have the, the ears of your heart open to the Spirit of what He might be saying into your life. Have your heart open. Have your mind open to God. Fill your mind with the take every thought captive. And so that's what all of this is what He means by praying without out ceasing. You know, when we talk about spiritual warfare, I've Oftentimes, and if you notice, I purposefully avoided a lot of, uh, of casting out demon talk, uh, and and uh, and I have, uh, you know, a lot of times that's immediately where people run to, and uh, is saying, "Well, we're talking about warfare. Well, how do we cast out demons? How do we do?" Well, most of the warfare that we read about, and especially in Paul's letters and things like that, he, he's not talking about casting out demons. He, He's talking about praying. He's talking about walking in the Spirit. He's talking about these things, you know, that we're talking about here. And oftentimes we, we get in this power mode. How do we get the power to do that? We're just like the guy uh, in the book of Acts that, that said, you know, uh, went up, to, was it Peter he went up to and said, I want some of that, you know. Give me that power that I can, you know, cast out demons and stuff like that. And so uh, and then you had the the, uh, the guys that went up and said, we cast you out in the name of, uh, of the, the Jesus who Paul preaches and we know how that went and stuff like that. It's just a power thing uh, and stuff. And so the disciples, you remember there was times when God, Jesus sent them out and he sent them out with authority to, to heal and authority to preach the kingdom and authority to cast out demons. And they came back and said, you know, even the demons were uh, submissive to us and, and, and that, that's good and well. But then there was one instance where there's a guy with a demon and they couldn't cast it out. And then Jesus showed up and uh, and the people said, we brought this guy to your disciples. They ain't helping us out at all. Will you help us? And, uh, and Jesus said, yeah, I can help you. And he cast the demon out. And then, of course, the disciples said, how come you could do that and we couldn't? And what did he say? He said, sometimes, or this kind didn't come out but by fasting and prayer he didn't tell them that they needed to do certain things to get more power he said you dudes need to pray more <laughs> that's basically what he said he said you guys need to pray more that's what you need to do and so we start talking about spiritual warfare and casting out demons and stuff like that let me just kind of say what Jesus said we just need to pray more we need to pray more. We need to, we need to be a people of prayer. We need to walk in prayer. And be prayer warriors for Christ. Walk in prayer. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. You know, uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. And, and this the problem is, is, you know, when we're talking about the battle within us that's keeping us from being the witnesses that we should be is that we're walking in the flesh. Uh, and so Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, he just says very simply, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when we talk about lust of the flesh, automatically we oftentimes we go to adultery and immorality and, and things like that. Listen, <clears throat> not sharing your faith is giving in to the lust of the flesh. The flesh does not want to share the faith. The flesh does not want to take the risk of being rejected. The flesh does not want to take the risk of being embarrassed. The flesh doesn't want to put things out there. The flesh wants to shut up and let people think that you're okay. And uh, that's what the flesh wants to do. And so witnessing is overcoming the flesh. 
by the Spirit. And how do we overcome the flesh? We walk in the Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, then we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> See, what, what we need more, we need to be a people of prayer that are on fire for Jesus. The Holy Spirit, by the way, is on fire for Jesus. The Holy Spirit is wanting to glorify Jesus in this church. The Holy Spirit is wanting to magnify Jesus in this church. If we are being led and filled by the Spirit, we will be on fire for Jesus, surrendered to the King, listening to the Holy Spirit, obeying the Holy Spirit, depending upon the Holy Spirit, and being used by the Holy Spirit to impact this community for Christ. Walk in the Spirit. See, it's not as much the way to keep from doing what's wrong, or in, in this case, the way to keep from not doing what's right. <laughs> you know, when we're talking about not witnessing and, and stuff. The way to keep from doing wrong is to do what's right. The way to keep from giving in to the flesh is to walk in the Spirit. The way to keep from letting your mind wander is, is to walk in prayer and, 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 and pray without ceasing and, and have your mind in continual communion with the Lord. The way to keep from walking in disobedience is to walk in obedience. Do what the Word of God says. That's number three, by the way. Walk in obedience. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I mean, that, that speaks of the Burkhalters there in Columbia and, and what they were doing, but also speaks of us. You're not doing it for results. You're not doing it to, I mean, we want to see lost people saved. Yes, 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 yes. But we're doing it for the Lord. We're walking in obedience to Him. The motive for our witnessing can't be just to get people to respond because then when people don't respond, we quit witnessing. The motive has got to be that we love the Lord and we want to obey the Lord. Don't stop. Keep on keeping on. Do it out of love. Number one, love for Him. And then number two, love for them. Let love be the motivation. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And remember, our witnessing is not in vain. Our praying is not in vain. Keep on keeping on. And that's the way that we can overcome the enemy. Walk in prayer, walk in the Spirit, and walk in obedience. Any questions or comments about that before I get into this acrostic of praying for the lost? I need to drink water. All right, we all good? All right, we all got this down, don't we? We're all perfect. We're not puffed up or anything like that. We're just perfect. No, we need to put these things into practice. So here's, here's something very practical. We talked about keep on, uh, to uh, walk in prayer, and this is how you can pray. Now, this is taken. Chuck Lawless is the one that wrote the chapter that's got this on. I, I've read several of his books on spiritual warfare and heard him talk. He's, um, I've, I've learned a lot from him. And so this is just something from him that just, it, 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 it's not any magic formula or anything like that, but they're just things that the Bible says we ought to be praying for. So it's, if you notice on the, the left side, if you go down, it spells out God's heart. So we want to pray God's heart for lost people, all right? And God cares for lost people. God loves lost people. Matter of fact, God loves lost people so much he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have an everlasting life. That's God's heart. And so we're praying God's heart. So how can what does that remind us to pray for? Well, the first four are praying for believers. You know, it's the opposite of the kind of the way I did my outline. We're praying for believers first. And then the, the last five, the heart, are, is praying for unbelievers. So praying for believers. Uh, G, what does the G stand for? The G stands for grace. That's what goes in that blank out there. Pray that believers will appreciate God's grace. And that's what we were talking about um, there. And notice he's not saying that lost people will understand. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But he's saying that we will appreciate the grace of God. In other words, we'll go with the grace of God. 
going sharing good news with those who need to hear. God has been gracious to me. God has forgiven me, and I need to share that with others that need to hear it. And God, has, whatever their situation is, God has grace for them. That's good news. The gospel is good news. It is, it is the good news of the message of Christ. It's a message of grace. And yet it is that grace that has been shown to us as the motivation to go share that for others. So grace, pray that believers, believers will appreciate God's grace and that will motivate us to go. Oh, obedient. Pray that believers will be obedient. We won't forget the commands of Christ. The Great Commission will obey the Great Commission to go and to teach all nations, to go and to preach the gospel to every creature, to go and to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Pray that we will be obedient personally, that God help me to be obedient to you. Help me to do it out of love for you. Help me to be obedient. And then pray that others will be obedient. I would love for you every morning to pray that your pastor will be obedient to the Lord every day. I would love that. And so pray for obedience. D, D stands for desire. Pray that believers will have a desire to tell others. And let me tell you, it, 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 there's some things that we do out of duty and obligation. And sometimes we witness, we may try to witness out of duty and obligation. It's not real effective that way. It's most effective when you're passionate about it. Passionate about seeing lost people saved. Passionate about the gospel, what it's done in your life and what it can do for others. But there are a million things every day that'll take that desire away from you. I mean, it can happen. It, I noticed it as I was, before I was going back over this, I, I'd done some of this earlier and I went back over it this afternoon and it, when, it just reminded me that this this morning and stuff, how just all, I'm, I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm studying and I'm working on some things for Sunday and I'm working on some things for Honduras and, and uh, to, to share down there and all of this and how just one little thing that I saw started to lead me down to discourage. I mean, I just, just saw something and I thought, oh man. And it began to think that, you know, Am I am I doing am I, am I doing all that God wants me to do? Am I man? If I have I messed things up? If I you know this type of thing? And, and it was just purely it was the devil trying to get me distracted and trying to get me discouraged so that I wouldn't study like I needed to study and so that I wouldn't pray like I needed to pray and uh, so that I wouldn't minister like I needed to minister and make the phone calls I needed to make and talk to people I needed to talk to and, and things like that. So I just sit there in my office and go like that and uh, preachers do that a lot <laughs> that's why they keep the door closed <laughs> uh, and stuff. They, they don't keep it closed because they're, su they're studying they keep it closed because they're having a pity party uh, and, uh, and don't want you to see that but it can happen and so we need God to keep the fires burning we need the Holy Spirit to, to blow on the flame and uh, to, to so pray for that Pray for that, that desire, that passion that we will go out of love for him and share the gospel out of love. And then S, uh, the fourth one for believers, uh, is speak. Pray that believers will speak the gospel fearlessly and clearly, that we'll be boldly obedient to the Holy Spirit in what he tells us to do. That we'll speak it. We, pride won't get in there. That we'll just present the simple gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit in such a way that people can see their need for Christ. Presenting the truth. Um, we want to present it clearly and we want to present it fearlessly. So that those are the praying, God's heart, praying for believers that will have God's heart in our witness. And now here's what we pray for non-believers. And these can be our family members. These can be for the people that are here Sunday morning in our invitation time. These can be for children this week. So what do we pray? H uh, stands for heart. Pray for non-believers to have a receptive heart. That God will soften the heart. It's the souls that we were talking about last week. That they'll have receptive soul uh, to receive the, the, the seed of the gospel. And by the way, only God can do that to hearts. Only God can move hearts. Only God can soften hardened hearts. 
Only God can change a heart. So we pray to God for non-believers to have a receptive heart. E, pray for their spiritual eyes. Pray their spiritual eyes will be open. So that's their understanding that they will, will see. They're blinded by the enemy. We've talked about that, uh, how the enemy tries to blind them. And they need to see. It's not obvious truth. It is spiritual truth. And God needs to open up their spiritual eyes. So pray that their spiritual eyes will be open. A, pray they will have God's attitude towards sin. That's very important. That they won't be resistant. Uh, that they won't be uh, obstinate. Uh, to uh, That they won't be uh, say, well, you know, I'm not that bad. But they'll see the need for a Savior. Uh, you can't get saved until you're until you get lost, <laughs> until you understand that you're lost, until you understand that you won't call on Jesus if you don't understand that you need Jesus. You won't ask for a Savior until you understand that you're a sinner. And so that's a work that God needs to do. And so we pray, we intercede, we go to war and pray that they'll have God's attitude towards sin, an attitude that will lead toward repentance, an attitude of brokenness. They'll see the reality of their sin. They'll see the heart of their sin, and they will turn from that sin. They'll see that they need a Savior, that they need Jesus. So pray they will have God's attitude towards sin. Are released. Pray they will be released to believe. They're in bondage. They're blinded and in chains and in bondage. So pray that they will be released so that they'll be free to believe, that they'll exercise their faith. They need to believe that they can't do it on their own. And they need to believe that Jesus did it all and that he will save them if they ask him to. So they need to be released to believe. They need to, they need to be able to exercise that, that faith. And oftentimes the way Satan tries to do it, Satan can't, can't keep them from praying to receive Christ, but he tries to, he, he throws those thoughts, he throws those ideas. Uh, he, for lack of a better term, speaks into their lives and says, you know, God wouldn't save you. you you're too bad to do this. You know, you've done too much or you don't really need this. You're as good as any of those people at church. And he throws all these lies to them and they need to be released from that. They need to have their eyes open and be released from all that, that they can see that they're not good enough and that regardless of what anybody else has done, they need Jesus. They need Jesus. And then T, pray that their life will be transformed. Not that they'll just repeat a prayer, but they'll see spiritual transformation. They'll be born again and have a changed life. And uh, I think part of that with transformation as well is that God will put the right people in place to disciple them and to help them in their walk with Christ. So those are just some effective things that I hope that uh, whether it's this or something else that you have that, that you'll begin and, and maybe you may want to on this sheet of paper, if you, if you keep it in your Bible or something, pull it out and, and write the names of some lost people, lost family members on here. Uh, especially as you're praying for Sunday service, pray that these things uh, will will happen. Uh, pray for your staff and the ministry that we do during the week, uh, that we won't be uh, just confined to, to sitting up here and preparing sermons, but that we'll get out among lost people and and uh, and, and and that these things will have a passion for that. Uh, pray for that this week. Uh, pray for the ones that will be teaching this week. Uh, the, the first four and then pray for the children uh, and those those last five that that's what they'll experience as well so any comments or questions well this kind of gets us through uh, this uh, warfare uh, and we're not going to be meeting next week and I'm, I'm praying about you know what our, our next study will be uh, the next week I'll be in Honduras, and so I won't be starting anything uh, then. And then the next week I'll be getting back late that Tuesday, and so I probably won't be preaching the next Wednesday. But I mean, we're going to be meeting, but we will uh, uh, we'll have some other folks in here sharing some things uh, with you from their hearts as well. But uh, let's remit.
I mean, just because the warfare study's over doesn't mean that the warfare's over. Not at all. And, uh, and especially, you know, in our church and in reaching out to the lost, Satan wants to do everything he can to divide this church, to get us distracted, to get us off base. And he's real good at doing that. Real good at doing that. I'm thankful for what God's been doing here lately, uh, but it's not because the devil ain't been trying. <laughs> and, uh, and it's not because the devil hadn't been successful in times past. Uh, and it's, he's trying right now. And uh, let's just make sure he doesn't use anybody in this room. Uh, and the way that'll happen is not by me just saying, devil ain't going to use me. The way that'll happen is by you praying for me and me praying for you. You need my prayers, and I need yours. I desperately need yours. And so uh, let's go to war for one another. Let's cover one another's back. And let's uh, walk in the victory that Jesus has given us. Let's pray together. Well, we do pray for, uh, for one another and for our church. Well, we've been focusing tonight on how the enemy tries to get us off, off focus and off target. And he's real successful at doing that. Well, Lord, as we've exposed some of his tactics and as we've reminded ourselves of the, the armor and the weapons that we have that are powerful to the pulling down of strongholds and are able to quench all the fiery darts, the wicked one. Lord, I pray that we'd walk in it. Lord, I pray that we would be that people of prayer. Lord, I pray that we would be filled with the fire of your spirit, a passion for glorifying Jesus, a passion for living for Jesus. And we would, out of that passion, and out of that, that fellowship and that prayer life and that real fellowship and love relationship with you would come a consistent faithful obedience to you to be the witnesses you've called us to be and to walk in righteousness and be the light that you've called us to be as well Lord transform the heart of this church Lord I pray that we would pretend to walk with you and we wouldn't pretend to be people of prayer but that it would be something real and genuine in our hearts and in our lives Lord, we do pray for our services Sunday. Lord, I pray that there would be a freedom in the invitation time. Lord, I pray that anybody that doesn't know you, that the moment, I pray that even the, the night before, when they lay their head down on the pillow, they begin to hear the voice of your spirit calling them. And that by the time the invitation time is given, that they would come running to you. Lord, I pray there'd be freedom. I pray that there'd be a mighty move of your spirit. Not because we hit every note on every song or, or share some brilliant outtakes in the sermon, but just because your spirit is calling and there is freedom to respond. Lord, I pray for next week. Lord, I pray for a VBS. Lord, I pray for the children that come. Lord, I thank you for the children that have given their lives to you and youth and children as well. But Lord, there, there are going to be several children here, maybe more than we even know, that are old enough and know enough in their minds, but yet their hearts have not been ready or not been challenged. And so, Lord, I, I pray that you would give them receptive hearts. And that they would see like they've never seen before. And that they would have a, a hatred of sin and a passion for you that they would turn from their sin and put their faith in you. Lord, for some of these children, if they don't 
they don't get it this week, if they don't get it soon, they may not have many more opportunities. So Lord, redeem the time. Do your work and use us for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.